Hey everyone, welcome back to the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. Dan Fates here on Friday. Before we get started, and is what I want to, we're unveiling, debuting this week, this NFL season. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. We really appreciate it. Mike and Jenna are coming back from LA, so I'm recording this one from home. But look, we're almost at 17,000 subscribers. I really appreciate it, and we would appreciate it if you continued to support this channel. Okay, so every Friday around this time, sometime on Friday afternoon, I will release my Uncle Dan best bets of the week. Look, this is something that I've documented over the last three years. And all every season, I have finished over 500. In total, over the last three years, I am 163, 146, and 9. Uh, it's about 51%. They've all documented. They've all been tweeted. They have all been posted on the web. Um, not saying that's great, but these picks are free. So take that for what you will. And I will say, if you followed me on Twitter, at Dan Fates, um, I got off to a hot start this week. Look, there are 10 home underdogs this week. It's the most in like 20 years for a week one of an NFL season. There is big disparity, but I was able to find a couple of picks um, on Thursday night. I tweeted out that I had won. I had Josh Allen over six and a half rushing attempts. I figured big game, bright lights, Josh Allen. While Ken Dorsey and Sean McDermott may want to say they want to limit the contact and not have as many hits on Josh Allen, they can't control anything once the ball is snapped. And Josh Allen is still going to be Josh Allen. So I thought that was one of the ones that I really liked that hit. Uh, I believe Allen was the Allen was the Bills' leading rusher, and he also rushed, I think, eight or nine times factoring in the knee because I, I like the Bills to probably win that game as well. Um, I picked them on our Buffalo Plus live in Los Angeles show. Actually, Mike and Jenna, we all picked the Bills. We were all right. I also had Gabe Davis. I locked this on Tuesday when I had posted it. Gabe Davis over three and a half receptions. I figured Stefan Diggs would kind of be shut down by Jalen Ramsey. I was wrong there, but I was right that it opened up more opportunities for Gabe Davis. He still had another big game, had four catches, so that did cash that over. And then I was also all over the under. So many people talked about all offseason, how excited they were for these two offenses. And after watching the preseason, the, knowing the Rams hadn't played any of their starters, um, I really liked the under. And I thought it was just a little bit too much of too much talk about the offenses and not enough respect to the defenses that both of these teams had. And I thought that was on display uh, easily cashing the under 52, the bills defense. Once again, I know there's a lot of concern about Benford and Elam going up against Matt Stafford and Cooper cup, Cooper cup went off. But besides that, um, the bills really kind of shut down that Rams offense. So moving forward, I said, I had nine plays. I usually tweet out or post the story for uncle Dan's best bets. If the Bills are playing on Thursday night, I will probably have some Thursday plays in. If I make a play on Thursday, it'll probably be out Thursday around 6, and then maybe the rest of the card will come out on Friday. So obviously a lot of these lines, I use DraftKings, um, but move around, see whatever ones you like. Last year, I finished one game over 500, and I started off really slow. But that wasn't going to stop me because I think you can fire a lot at this board <laughs> this week. So we will start with a huge road favorite. And I will take the Ravens laying seven against the Jets. The Jets have all kinds of issues on the offensive line. No idea. And they also have Joe Flacco. So I will lay the points believing that Lamar Jackson is going to go scorched earth on this season. It just came out today that he's going to gamble on himself this season. Him and the Ravens did not reach a new deal on a new contract. Lamar Jackson's really good. I think last year he was battling, obviously, the COVID concerns. They had riddled with injuries. I think this is a team that is not being talked about enough. And Lamar Jackson, um, he is an MVP. So I, I or was it has won the MVP. He can be that dynamic guy that can just say, screw it, I'm going to take over games all by myself. I like them a lot. Uh, not really high on the Jets with the current issues that they're having, so I will lay the big number there. The next game, I like the Steelers at Bengals 
over 44 and a half. I like both offenses in this one. This number just seems too low for me. I think it you're you're considering this an AFC North matchup, but I really don't think either of those are the grinded out teams that we've usually come to see out of that AFC North. I like both offenses. Mitch Trubisky is an upgrade from Ben Roethlisberger in that Steelers offense. And talking about upgrades, since he has upgraded their offensive line. So I like both of those improvements for Joe Burrow and Mitch Trubisky. I'm putting my over hat back on. I hate betting unders, but I had to do it in the Bills game. I was right. That was a hold your nose kind of game. Um, life's too short to bet the under, as Big Cat would say. So I like the over 44 and a half in the Steelers Bengals game. Then to some underdogs. Give me the fighting Dan Campbell's plus four and a half at home. I think a lot of people like the Lions because of what they saw on hard knocks. I think the Eagles are getting a lot of love and I'm not sure that I love all of it. Detroit isn't a good team, but they are better than what they were last year. And the one thing we know about them is they will fight till the very end. I can see the Eagles winning maybe on a last second field goal or something like that. But I think the Lions fight until the very end. Philly wins. I have Detroit, though, covering in a close one. Another game. They were a favorite. Now it's a pick them at, at most books as I'm recording this on Friday afternoon. I want Baker Mayfield. I'm betting on Baker Mayfield to go up against the Browns. And I am jumping on the Baker Mayfield revenge tour. Nick Chubb said, we don't know what to expect from Baker. Like, yeah, you never really know what to expect from Baker, but he can put it all together in one game, focus his energy into beating his team and an organization that he feels has wronged them. And to put on my backwards hat and make Colin Coward freak out, I'm betting on Baker Mayfield in this one. I think he gets a big win um, and they're at home. And the other thing that, that I really like about this, the Panthers, well, I think Matt Rule is a terrible head coach. The roster isn't as bad as what their record may say, and that's a lot of times because they have been injured. The Panthers are healthy right now. Christian McCaffrey isn't hurt yet. That is a huge boost. And the one thing that I am worried about with the Browns is that they can run the ball with Nick Chubb. Well, I know the Panthers can stop the run. A great front seven for a defense. So give me the Panthers just to win straight up at home against the Browns. All right. Next, we've got two games left. Steelers, or sorry, Cardinals plus six at home against the Chiefs. And the only reason I'm doing this is I looked at the can calendar. I saw it was September. And in September and October, I will bet on Kyler Murray. It's almost an auto bet for me. Kansas City, I'm not really sure if they care all that much about winning big last year, their first three weeks of the season rough. They started one and two. They had a weird comeback win against the Browns where they won by like three points. Andy Reid is such a veteran coach. I don't think he cares all that much about sending a message in week one. They already know what they are. They may need to figure out some things. I don't know how the adjustment period goes without Tyree kill. So I will take the big points here. Give me a touchdown. Give me Kyler Murray at home as a big dog here. And finally, my last bet of the week, game number nine, Buccaneers at Cowboys under 51. Look, I don't love the unders. I've stated it before, but I just have too many question marks around Tom Brady and their offensive line. I think both teams will play more conservative. Um, I, I think we're going to see a lot of that in week one um, where people think, oh, points are going to be scored. This is going to be great. I think there's a learning curve, especially for the Bucs. If we know one thing about Tom Brady is that he does not like pressure in his face. I think the Cowboys can generate some pressure in his face, make him uncomfortable. I see this game being like a 20 to 17, 24, 20 kind of game, um, especially on Sunday night, slow starts in Dallas. I like the under in that one. So a quick recap. I'm already three and zero on the season. Bill's under. Allen over rushing yards, Gabe Davis over receptions. I'm already 3 and 0. Then I like the Panthers, pick them. The Ravens minus 7, the Lions plus 4, Steelers Bengals over 44 and a half, Cardinals plus 6, Bucks Cowboys under 51. We will keep track of them all on my nice little uh folder here. Every week we will do this around Friday. If I don't win, guess what guys? 
they're free. They're free. Okay. So, so take them with a grain of salt. Um, we will look to have another good season every Friday. The article will come out, but obviously I wanted to make a video edition this time and kind of hear what you guys have to say. Be sure to like comment and subscribe. We, we read all the comments, even the ones that you guys rip on me for. So that is the uncle Dan's best bets for week one, nine games already three and oh, six more plays are still in play for Sunday, but Thanks for watching here on the Buffalo Plus YouTube channel. I'm Uncle Dan. We'll see you next week.